I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And uh, before we get too far into it, I just want to say, folks, I'm a little sick, so I'm going to be off this episode. Also, we want to get a little housekeeping done out of the way. Um, if you were looking to kind of get a podcast up and running, uh, start using, if you like post your podcast and you're trying to do some advertisement on Twitter, put it under hashtag Potter and Family. And it kind of goes to this whole group that's we're, we're part of this group. Now, we've been part of it for some time, but we never really talked that much about it. And um, there's this new app called, I don't know how new it is actually, but it's called Slack. And basically it's just this big chat. And um, I believe it was Lou from Paint It Black told me about the app, sent me a, and sent me a link and gave me an invite. And I got in there. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's basically this thing kind of keeps everybody a little more connected. Because I know when you're on like Twitter, if you have a lot, if you're following a lot of people, it's kind of hard to keep track of everybody, especially the different podcasts. So, if you're within like this particular group, it kind of it works, and you know, it makes it a little bit more easier to communicate between other podcasts. You're trying to get it up and running. So, yeah, give that a look. What's it called Slacker? Slack. Slack. Yeah. Slacker. Slack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Slack. Like you're wearing a pair of slacks because you're you know you're going out to a funeral because slacks well, only singular. Yeah. So you you haven't slack erred yet. You've just slack. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You haven't worked your way to it yet. You haven't earned that. I haven't ass. worked my way towards a slogan for that company. They're like, please don't <laughs> advertise again for us. <laughs> please stop sending us emails. It's not going to happen. But um, speaking of last episode, after our fun Daredevil rant, I'm like, you know what? I want to go back and watch that Electra movie. I haven't seen it since it came out, and it's just one of those. It's like that kind of like those mystery questions. You're like, I remember when I watched it. It wasn't like amazing but it wasn't bad i'm like i just want to kind of see how that holds up over time i already know what you're gonna say and you know (laughs) it's one of those movies like it's not like a there's nothing really bad about that movie it's not an amazing movie by any stand and it's the weird thing about that movie though for about half the movie i don't feel like i'm actually watching a superhero movie at all i feel like i'm watching a weird kind of drama like an artsy drama It, it sounds weird but there's that period where, like, okay, in the beginning, she's Electra, you know, she's fighting, she's stabbing people and so on. But then all of a sudden, she's, like, at this lake house for, like, a half an hour or so. Maybe it's not that long, but... And there's, like, you know, the people next door. And if you just turn that movie on at that point, you would probably have no idea that you were watching something Marvel-related. Not at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's it, it's almost like this weird, like, romantic drama. And, you know, it, it's very elegantly shot and all this stuff. It's, like... You know, but it's it's weird. It kind of throws you off. And then it finally cuts back in and, you know, there's some more action and so on. And it's not filled with copious amounts of action or anything like that. It's one of those movies that, like, yeah, you could probably do a much better Electra one. But I will say, it's you know, for what it is, it's not bad for, you know, at that time period and everything like that. You know, not up to par as Daredevil. I think that's the thing is Daredevil raised that bar so high for those other Marvel Knights ones that all the rest of them, you know, it's like, okay, well... We're good. We got a director's cut of it, too. Does it really, like, bring the movie around? Well, no, that's, like, six more minutes of God knows what, because I haven't seen it since it came out, but... At some point, she has a dream with Ben Affleck talking to her, like, you're gonna come back. I miss you. Like, I got things I gotta do still. I'm not done yet. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. He just sinks into the ground, just slowly. I mean, it's got cool special effects, and it's got a lot of characters, and I will say, like, yeah, most of the characters always kind of go down with couple hits, and hit. that's about it. Well, that's yeah, the thing. It's a lot just kind of kinda like, they're like, we got a team of like seven or eight villains, or maybe it's not even that many, but this is like, okay, so she's got It's like win. at least a good five. <laughs> but then like, just kind of like, oh, I punched this guy a few times. Oh, nothing's working on him. Let me just bring this rotting tree down on him. Oh, that killed him. Yeah, Simple big guy's like, trees. It's like, he can't dodge that. And then there's like this chick who, I don't know, she's kind of like Poison Ivy, kind of. She kisses people, and at some point, like... Lecture just turns, just like throws her side through several bushes, just gets that bitch right in the face. So it's kind of yeah. like those It was cool they had stick in there. I like that. But I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I remember going to see that movie when I still really loved the original Daredevil cut. 
some were going to see that movie and just being like, oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. Like, yeah, it was whatever. Like, it wasn't, like, god-awful, but it just wasn't, you know, that great. Um, well, it's weird because, like, that – okay, if Daredevil kind of had maybe some – if this is sort of made for, like, a teenage audience – because I was the, when when I put together the podcast and I, I wouldn't watch the trailer to throw that in there, they literally have I forgot this, this pool, into, like it was in every action. like let the bodies hit the pool. like I'm like oh my god they got you know that song in there I forgot about that so that you could see how that movie's so geared towards this where this movie it it is like it reminds me like you're watching some weird European drama like it's 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 strange it's almost like. I don't know who exactly like they were. They clearly weren't shooting for the same audience as Daredevil. Like not at all. Even though the weird thing is, it's a sequel, so you think they'd be shooting for that same audience. But instead, it's it's almost like they just got like who's Mister Fancy Pants director of like Europe or something like that. Like, <laughs> get that guy over here. Make him make this kind of like because it's really like it's got a lot of great shots in it, and it's like somebody. I mean, like there is a lot of talent into it, but as an Electra film, it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, maybe if it was, like, the way you describe it, it almost sounds like it's trying to be, like, the American of superhero yeah, movies. Yeah, that, that's actually sort of what it feels like. It's sort of like the American, but not nearly that's as good as the American. But yeah. I mean, it's not bad either, though. It's, it's not, it's like, well, movies, I'd say it's like, it's like a two and a half out of four. It's like, it's watchable, but if you never saw it, it's not like you're missing out on anything either. That is, <laughs> quote on the movie, it's watchable, but if you've never <laughs> seen it, it's not all. <laughs> Bearable. You won't want to kill yourself. I will say, though, watchable. like. Cause I I just bought the Blu-ray director's cut. I'm like fuck, it's like a couple, it's like five bucks on Amazon. I'll get it. That movie's special features though is like ridiculous. I was like, holy crap! There was an hour just on all the cre- all the artists and creators of Dare or of uh, Electra for like a full hour. And I think there was like a second part to it and everything. And it was actually like a little bit more in depth than like a lot of even like the DC ones and stuff too. Because it literally had like Claus Johnson like. He was like, here, look at, here's some inking pages. Here's some pages of like, this is what Frank sent me. This is what it looked like when he had it. This is what it looked like when I did it. Clearly, you can see who's the best. No. <laughs> did they ever do that thing where they're just like, now it's time for our one-on-one interview with Frank Miller. And all of a sudden, he's just, he just, they try to sneak in there. He's like, get the hell out of here! Like, she's met with a baseball bat. No, no, something. Frank Miller talked for like 10 minutes. They had, they really? almost have it in sections where like, each person who kind of like, was big on Electra talk. I mean, probably one of the best special features at least of that that i've ever seen and and they didn't even treat it like hey you know comics you like movies well let's show you an artist look there's one over there in the corner <laughs> he's funny isn't he like it was like a really like hey no this is made for somebody who really is creative and wants to kind of see some of the work and get some like in-depth interviews i was actually surprised i would say electra is worth going out buying that blu-ray if all you watch was the special features alone because there was like I was like, holy fuck. Now, I know that that is, like, the time period. That's probably the best pinnacle moment of, like, special features. It was, like, early 2000s to about, like, sort of mid to late 2000s. That was when, like, no matter what movie you pretty much got, they're like, you get a fuck ton of extras. The movie was only two hours long, but here's six hours of material. Well, Which I kind of miss nowadays, because nowadays, even big movies are kind of like, there, there's a 20-minute thing on there. Uh, yeah, whatever. Fuck you. You bought the movie. Yeah, or even just, some of them, too. It's like, yeah, I'll charge you $25 once the movie first comes out, but no special features, no audio commentary, no nothing. Yeah, I just got uh, Hateful Eight, and there's, like, hardly anything on the special features of that movie. Great great movie, worth t- totally worth owning, but hardly any features on it. Now, one thing I'll well, say, though... that's because, like, here's an example. You think about Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs and all those movies. When they made those DVDs come out in the 2000s, they had a lot of special features on them, and Jackie Brown and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah, but what something I was going to say, though, was... Uh, I think when it comes to like superhero movies, I think it was one of those things where there's only so many interviews you can have Stan Lee saying, that's when, you know, the the chief editor said, Stan, people don't like spiders. You can't make a guy based off a spider. What you doing? You know, there's only so many times you can have that interview. You know what I mean? Because it's always mm-hmm. kind of this, even though I always enjoy it, but it's always just kind of like, that's when we decided to do like, uh, try and make a team of four people. Didn't get along, but you know, one guy was a rock, one lady was invisible or some shit, you know? So I think it was one of those things where like, it's t- <laughs> just like that point where like, it's like, I don't even remember who the fuck they were, but they were great. <laughs> Which one am I doing this interview for Batman? Like you didn't make Batman stand. Ah, that's what let me tell you think. about <laughs> the swamp thing. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about the crow. Let me tell you about Judge Dredd. (laughs) When I was in England. (laughs) 
<laughs> Stan, you, you, you didn't create Judge Dredd either. <laughs> I Let didn't me tell you about this thing called DBZ. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Stan thinks he's created everything by this point. <laughs> no, we were all making fun of him, but yeah, we were all like heartbroken when he like was sick and didn't show up to that <laughs> Comic Con thing we went to. <laughs> we'll settle for Bruce Campbell, but no, Bruce, Bruce Campbell was a fucking amazing. <laughs> Bruce Campbell like... was a win. Bruce Campbell was no, no, a win. It... And plus, we were in the front row. For... We were at the end of the line. This is like where those few things where it, like ever pans out. It's like. You're at the end of the line. Man, we might not make it in there. We get up and they're like, we don't have anywhere else for you to go but the front. How does that sound? Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to stand, but you're in the front. Well, fuck yeah. I was thinking that just kind of reminded me. I was, I was thinking, I mean, who knows? They might do it now, but because now you can get people funding to make anything just about. But if they ever want to make like a CG, like a uh, Earthworm Jim movie, I want to be the perfect er- voice for Earthworm Jim. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, that would actually be pretty sweet. For That's a second, I was like, going to say live action, but just stretching like pink rubber over his face just look haunting. That looked freaky as fuck. So, but you know, Earthworm with- Jim is something that would work in. C- That's like the perfect example of a movie that'd be totally fine in CG. Now, I don't think that's ever going to happen because Earthworm Jim is just kind of this. I mean, like it could, but there's some of those things like that is pretty much like 90s as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, unless we're having. I mean, we, we kind of have this like going back to the 90s too, but like that almost like. <laughs> I mean, that, that's as 90s as you can get, Earthworm Jim. And I, I played that game. I went through it not too long ago, actually. Mm-hmm. And they had, like, that cool HD version of it that was out there. But, yeah, it's one of those ones. I mean, I think that'd be sweet, but I don't, I don't know if there's... Other than us, like, how many people are going to know what that is? I mean, I know, I know you can kind of sell anything as long as you market it well. I can see them probably putting out, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying this needs to happen. Indiegogo, this bitch. I'm not saying that. But it's one of those things where... I'm not really surprised by anything anymore whenever something gets made. I mean, you had a bunch of people. I mean, granted, it was a fan film, but <laughs> you had the <laughs> R-rated Power Rangers mo- like fan film. And then you suddenly had people making a petition. Didn't happen. Maybe like, make it like that movie. Make the next one coming out like this. That's what people want to see. You know, that wasn't going to happen. You know that. But the fact yeah. that it got far enough to do that, you know, or the fact that enough people signed a petition to get this, this is going years back, but to have like Firefly made. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's cool that these things can kind of Or happen. Serenity. Serenity. Yeah, serenity yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. But you never know. I will say, know. speaking of kind of this, this, this be a kind of, I know it's just me, the ongoing topic, but I did, what I did see is about a while ago by now, but when I saw Batman v Superman in theaters again, the second time around, I will say, was I didn't really have much to complain about by that point because I accepted everything that was in the movie. And it was really fucking enjoyable. And even like when Batman kills, I realized that he only kills when he's in a vehicle. So as long as there's something between him and the death, <laughs> as long as it's not really technically his hands, it's okay, I guess. Or if it's because a gun he... in his hands, because technically the gun that killed the guy. Well, there's, okay, there's there's the Dark Knight scene, but like that that's kind of like the acceptable kill. But other than that, mm-hmm. though, the rest of it there. But I went in there and I was like, you know what? I like everything. I, I really couldn't complain. I was like... Once I accepted things, it's like, I still really like Superman a lot. I feel like I'm the only person defending Superman anymore. But even the Batman stuff, it's like, okay. I, I looked, I'm like, the killing, it's, you know, it's there. I could go without that. That's still like, like the one thing. If that was about the one thing that I could have taken out, I wish he just wasn't killing. Or we just kind of edited around those scenes a little bit better so it didn't look like he was blowing people up and killing them. But other than that, though, I love the hell out of that movie. I almost, I'll say this, like, no, this is probably because it's just Batman Superman fan. But I liked it like a three and a half out of four the second time I saw it. Um, I still liked it. I mean, I'm still probably like at a three right there. I mean, I, I still liked it. I'm still going to get it when it comes out on Blu-ray. I'm betting that the uh, additional 30 minutes in the R-rated cut will probably make it seem... Because I'll be honest, watching that movie, it, it feels more like an R-rated movie when you're watching that movie. Especially the idea of like, just like the weird unsettling things. Like there's the part where Lux Luthor drops the pictures of Martha and she has like witch written on her head. She she has a gag in her mouth. It's all like, you know, that like that's in a superhero movie, <laughs> you know? And that came from Lex Luthor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a wacky, like, plan. Like, you gotta stop the train from running into town square! Ha ha ha! You know, nothing like that. He's like, no, we're just gonna set her on fire. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, like, I'll say, that, like, I think it's, you know, it's not the best of them all. And, you know, in the future, I think they'll get, you know, even better. But for what it was, and once I kind of accepted it and took it in, I I really had nothing really to complain about other than Batman killing just for those couple moments. And it actually technically isn't even as much as it felt like it was the first time. But... 
that was just a quick. I just wanted to throw um, that out there because I knew I knew that Batman that movie's gonna be the one of those ones we'll be talking about for a long time. And hell, this is like I looked at our podcast. I'm like, this is like the fucking month of Batman. It's just like we got all these Batman things going, and then next week we got fucking Justice League versus Teen Titans, so the Batman doesn't stop. Just when you thought it was gonna <laughs> stop, there's more to come. <laughs> That's where I'd usually try to do the voice, but it would hurt my head to do the voice right now. But um, it'll give me a brain fucking seizure if I did it. It might. I'm. Uh, I mean, we'll get into this part in a little bit. I saw Hardcore Henry, Henry yesterday when I was already sick, and that movie it was fantastic. We'll, we'll go into that in a little while. But I mean, that did not help. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll, so. I'll tell you this because I, I watched Hardcore Henry last night too, and the movie itself is really fucking good, but. Whatever I like, I, we had Thai food beforehand, like a couple hours, and maybe it just didn't settle so well at the moment or something like that. But I, I did get like a headache and nauseous from the movie. I will say, I think that movie would be a better experience not in the theaters. <laughs> I think yeah. the theater itself is what kind of put it over the edge because it, it's almost just a little bit too shaky. Because, you know, it's going for like this is almost in a sense, it's kind of like Sucker Punch, where this is a video game movie, but it's not based on a video game. But the thing is, is, you know, in a video game when you're watching, let's just say you're watching a cutscene like in Wolfenstein or even you could even say Call of Duty or Halo or anything like that. Since it's a video game, you know, you got this camera moving and, you know, they add in the realism of like, oh, it's a body and all that stuff. But it's still pretty smooth. Where this one, you're literally getting, since it's a real person, you're getting every twitch of his head forward, backwards, left, right, spinning, you know, you know, all this stuff. And I think it's almost just a little bit too much on the shaky. And then the weird thing too, like what bothered me the most as far as like when I noticed it would get me the, the most kind of nauseous, it was all the, it was all the whip pans and the, and almost the cutting. Cause when it just kind of would, you know, he's walking along and then it cuts ahead, cuts ahead, cuts ahead. It does that kind of like static. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, cause it's got an interesting way. It's like, instead of just trying to make it feel like it's all one long take, they just almost do it like, since he's got pretty much, you know, camera of robot eyes, it's almost like somebody sat down and edited it together. It has that feel to it. Like, this is not, we're not really getting this live in a sense. We're getting it like somebody already took this material and edited it together. Mm-hmm. But, no, I mean, no. I'll say this. Other than that, though, it's a really sweet movie. But I, I just don't know. It's almost, you almost want to go in there, like, after fasting. <laughs> yeah, I wanted that movie, like, I was already feeling a little, and then I just... I wanted that movie feeling a little weather, and then um, it's like whatever. I just want to really want to see this movie. Spencer's prop. We even we even decide, we, we even both agree upon checking it out. It was just one of those things like we I'm know. gonna see it because Spencer's probably gonna see it, and we're gonna talk about it tomorrow. So you know, and I just went along there with my friend TJ, and we both loved the movie. But watching that movie, I got so damn like it was more like I could handle it throughout most of the movie, but it was more the end, near the end when he's on the rooftop. Fighting. Back, we're, back we're gonna four, talk back about. Four. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this movie. I mean, you should know if you if you listen to the podcast, you probably know this by now. But if first time listening to the show, we're gonna talk about the movies if you already seen it. So spoilers ahead. But um, pretty much with the, when it gets to the end of the movie, when he's on the roof, like fighting all those guys, and you just got all these blurs of white coming at him back and forth, back and forth, and he's just fighting all these guys. They're all dressed in white. That's where I started feeling, okay, wrap this up, wrap this up, because I'm just feeling so damn sick right now. But beyond that, though, I mean, it was mostly tolerable to me, but I think, you know, it's just, and that sure, it sure shit didn't help the way I was feeling at the time. Luckily, I was enjoying the hell out of the movie, though. Because I, I, I gotta say, because, you know, like, for somebody who has a really st- strong stomach, I'm like, I, that movie... That's going to be an instant classic for everybody who works at the theater. Be like, yeah, I fucking hated that movie. Why? Because people threw up left and right in the theater, and I always had to go clean it up. I, I can, I, you can just see, because if that bothered me and that bothered you, there's people out there that are really weak that would fucking be throwing up left and right in the theaters, and you'd know that people are going to do it. Now, sadly enough, the movie wasn't very crowded, and I saw it on a Friday, too, so it was like, there was just a, like eight bros in there in the background, and that was it. Now, this that's kind of the kind of movie I'm not sure if like bros would love it or if they would hate it. It's kind of hard to take because I know they'd love the idea of like a, a show, like <laughs> Call of Duty in like a movie. I know they like the idea of that. But once mm-hmm. it got to like all the Metal Gear Solid ish superpower type shit, that's where I can kind of see like a bunch of bros like this is gay, you know. So yeah, well, that's what I thought was kind of cool about it is that it did have sort of 
you, you, yeah, Metal Gear. But it would really remind me of it. This almost could have been like called Crank Three, and it would make total yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it, it was very Crank like. Yeah, they had so much inspiration from Crank. Even, they even took, even though this isn't Crank, it's the same director. Uh, they even took a bit from Gamer. Gamer, there is the part where the guy that plays Dexter is singing I Got You Under My Skin, and he has a bunch of guys dancing along with him. Mm-hmm. And that there's a scene very similar to that. I, the guy from District 9, who, who's basically, he's more or less the star of this movie when it gets down to it. Yeah, because um, you don't really see your, like, or the, you know, the player, I guess you could call him. But you don't see Henry, really. You see his part of his face when he goes down in front of, like, some broken glass for a minute. But when you see, like, uh, there's a part, because well, basically there's, it's, it's, I'll say this, I thought this movie was hilarious as shit. Like, I absolutely love this movie. It's just kind of like what you said. It's just, like, once I was got out of it, I just felt a little sick. But beyond that, though, I thought it was absolutely awesome. And just hilarious as fuck in certain scenes. Like, because... Yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of good comedy in it, which I almost didn't expect, but... Because there's a character named Jimmy. And basically, when you first introduce Jimmy, he's this badass, like, you know, um, gangster, like, kind of like British gangster. Like, oh, this guy's going to be here for a while. Then he get, then he dies. Like, oh, fuck, man. I was Because well, I was like, oh, is that is that all he was in the movie for? I was like, holy fuck. Like, yep, we got that cameo. We can only afford it for, you know, a five-minute scene, two-day shoot. And I was like, I, maybe that's all it was. And then it's cool because he keeps coming back. And at first, you're going like, the fuck? And he comes back, and, the, and, the, and this is almost like an acting reel for that guy. Because he plays, like, ten completely different characters. And I, it, that almost in itself is just like... You know, it's, it's almost like watching an Eddie Murphy movie where he's going to play the whole family. That's pretty much what this movie's like. Except for he's just playing all these random-ass different guys. You mm-hmm. know, one guy's a hippie stoner guy. One guy's a punk rocker guy. One guy's, like, you know, a s- sniper Another guy is like an old fashioned, like kind of British, uh, like infantry troop. He's like, come on, lads, we can do this now. No fear. You know, almost like a World War II propaganda. And then, you know, the main one's the guy who's paralyzed in a wheelchair and he's controlling, who's controlling him. him. Yeah. Like that part right there was one of those things. Like I was, I was waiting for them to explain how that happened because I was like, oh man, that dude's dead. That, that sucks. And then when like he's sitting on the bus. And some homeless guy comes walking up to him. And he just pulls down his beard. He's just, it's me. It's Jimmy. You know, it's like, oh, my fucking God. Are you kidding me? That, that That's when I realized, oh, anybody can come back in this thing. And then this part's hilarious. He just says, he just looks at the window. He's like, my God, that is the gayest jacket I've ever seen. And you see this guy with this dome helmet on walking around like in this, basically this mirror jacket, like this bulky Big old armor thing. He says like, hey. That's a lovely jacket, man. And also, he shoots a flame Oh, fuck! Gets him on fire. <laughs> this big action scene starts up. <laughs> well, the other thing that's kind of interesting, too, is this movie is like, it's a full-on Russian film. And then they did this smart thing like French movies do, where it's like, we'll get, well, except for they got kind of more British people, but like, we'll get a couple of English people in there, and then we can sell it to everybody else. And, you know, the average Joe might be confused and not even realize that they're watching a foreign picture. And that's pretty much what it was. It was like a full-on Russian movie. And that's where I was like, some of those jokes, it's like, that reminds me of like a total like Russian joke. Like, that. oh, look how good, look at that guy's gay jacket. Because they had a couple of like those kind of jokes in there too. <laughs> and it's, there's always just kind of, I noticed that a lot of like Russian humor. It's, there's always that masculinity going on and all that stuff. But that, I thought that was kind of cool. I'm actually kind of surprised this movie came to the theaters. Because when, when you do look at it, it's like, it's like, it just seems so foreign that, you know, because even I would say more than half the movie's in Russian, anyways. There's a lot of subtitles in it. Mm-hmm. Well, plus it's also one of those things where I kind of like how much they were unflinching as far as like making it weird and over the top and, and like with science fiction type shit. Like the main villain is literally seems like a Metal Gear Solid villain. He has telekinesis. He has long white hair, red eyes. He's always chewing up the scenery. He's very kind of proper, but then just very, he's going to murder someone right in the right in the scene. You know, just a total douchebag. And he's chewing up the scenery, but he works. Uh, I think his name is Aiken or something like that. Yeah, and, no, no, uh, he's great. There's, yeah, he's great at it too because he just feels evil, and but like a character, you know. Mm-hmm. And you kind of are wondering what exactly he's doing at first. Like, why is he doing? Why? Why is he torturing this guy? Even though it's, if this guy's supposed to be kind of like his test subject in a sense. And basically, the, the, you find out at the end of the movie that the reason why they're uh, that you're just kind of they're using you because they know that it's they know if they if they make it look like you escaped. I'm saying you because you know you're. That's how it's supposed to feel. You're supposed to be like the player. That's why they almost don't even give Henry a voice or anything like that. 
it, yeah, it's, they, it's, they, it's they, classic. It has like, she has total like classic video game logic. It's that's why sort of Link doesn't have a voice, or in the original Grand Theft Auto games, you know, he doesn't have a voice because they want to be like the second you give him a voice, it takes away. You don't really feel like you're watching somebody else's story now. You don't feel like you are the player. That's why I'm always kind of like, I actually personally like video games, unless I'm playing something like a Batman or something like that, where the character doesn't have a voice. I like when they just kind of are there, because then I, I feel like that's more me, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, if I play a game, it's, it's like the perfect example is Fallout 4. When they gave that guy a voice in there, you, it, he's a character now. He's, he's not you, really. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, anyways, I was saying they're trying to basically make it look like <clears throat> this way where um, you, uh, Henry escapes and they know that if Henry, it looks like Henry escapes, Jimmy's going to come out of the way and try and help him for whatever reason. So basically they're using, this is the big plot twist that you find out at the end of the movie, they're using, Hen- they're using Henry to find Jimmy. Yeah. And that's kind of how it is, and he's got tracers in him and all kinds of stuff as it goes on. And the other twist, too, is it's like they have, they shows her in the trailer, but it's like he's got, they say, hey, Henry, here's your wife. You know, so in a sense, it's like he's doing all this stuff for her. And I kind of figured this one out, like, right, right away. I'm like, I know she'll probably be, like, working with the other guy. That just seems about right. And they do have that kind of twist later on. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not your wife. This is, I'm really, you know, married to the main villain, blah, blah, blah. But I, But using your footage or whatever, we'll assume that, you'll do anything for your wife, even though you really don't know her technically. And then we'll implant in all these other soldiers we have. And it sh- he even has a montage where it shows her saying the same thing, but just different names for each one of those guys thinking that this is their wife, mm-hmm. which, it, which works out well, but no, this movie overall, it's really cool. It's got great scenes in it. Tons of action. I can't even wait for the Blu-ray to come out just to watch the special features on it. Something I'll say about it also um, is uh, a lot of people are going to roll their eyes when they hear this. I'm kind of surprised, and I liked how the amount of heart the movie added it. Because even though this is a balls the wall violent action movie with a lot of over top humor, and that sometimes gives you that, that the few moments where you actually have like emotion or like more heavier, sadder stuff, and I think it kind of hits it that much more. Granted, you had Tim Roth as the in the a father. flashback, based as the father, so that helps when you got an actor as good as him doing that. Mm-hmm. But um, it's one of those things where, like, even the part when the last Jimmy dies, you actually do kind of feel it for a minute. You know what I mean? Some people may say it's, like, melodramatic, but I think given the rest of the movie, it works, and it kind of, uh, it all fits together nicely. No, yeah, no, I, I think that is. I think that's almost, you know, the, it's like the characters in it are great. The action in it's phenomenal. You get scenes that, you, you've seen them before, but nobody's done it, like, the whole movie's like this. Now here's kind of an example of like um, the the um, the brothers Grimsby, which came out only a handful of weeks before this movie. They had I remember watching it go like oh they literally kind of like got to the hardcore Henry scenes before hardcore Henry did it because they have a handful of scenes in that movie where it's all from a first person perspective because he's got a, he's got these uh, I think they put on contacts I can't remember but they got little cameras in there. So you know when Mark Strong's running around he's shooting people and all kinds of stuff. I mean it looks just like that, mm-hmm. but. It does it in just, like, little bits that it almost kind of like, oh, okay, well, that was a really cool action scene, but now we're back to a regular movie. And then they even do it to Sasha Baron Cohen wears it for a moment. And of course, he does funny stuff with it on, but mm-hmm. it's all in first person. So it's kind of neat to see that there, which kind of begs the question, like, I mean, this movie right here, um, Hardcore Henry, because really what it is, it's a very artsy, experimental film. That That's kind of what it is. I mean, like, you could say it's an action movie, but it, to me, it almost reminds you of, like, art house, experimental. Because it just is a ballsy film for trying something that nobody else has really done. Like, hey, let's make an entire movie in first person. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, Sans on the Brother Grisby, they use it a handful of times in there. Which, I don't know, if, like, probably realistically, I'll say, a movie's probably better balanced out if you go between regular movie and then having a handful of action scenes being in first person shooter. Uh-huh. I think they just want to do the thing where they finally... I think they just want to be... Maybe there's one before it, but I think... They want to be the first major movie to actually just go, you know, let's just go full first person. Like, because there, there is one or two shots that break away from the first person, but they're very quick scenes. So I think that, like, but I think they're what they want to be one well, of the they're first not, movies. Well, they don't really, there's nothing in it that really breaks away. They just find ways that kind of get weird angles. So it kind of, you can see multiple stuff. Well, there's the part where um, <coughs> Henry 
is standing out like out of the truck and uh, Eakin is going to beat him with, with the bat in the back of the head. And as he stands there, you suddenly get a shot of Eakin swinging when there's no way Henry could see that right there. So, I mean, you know, there's like one or two things kind of like that, but it's nothing to like, Hey, this movie cheated, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And that, that's even too, that's kind of like still like, well, I think it's just almost maybe he turned his head or something like that. I mean, I think that's probably all it is, mm. but you know, like, yeah, well, overall, I think, I mean, just the fact that they, this movie did it. Cause yeah, these shots have been in movies before, but nobody's done it like the whole time, at least not as a major motion picture. I mean, you got those ones online, but they're shorts and all that stuff. So to see this is pretty cool. And it kind of feels like, it almost feels like it would have to take a European like group to do it before any, like an American would take a chance on something like this. I feel like that's what happens a lot of times. Usually I think a European director would usually, cause I think that once you had something like, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. You saw a lot more American movies trying to do that whole fusion. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's something about, I think just a lot of older American guys that are producing films just don't want to gamble sometimes on experimental stuff. Because this movie, I kind of wonder how well it's going to do. Because as I said, when I saw it in the theaters, it wasn't that crowded. Looks like it's one of those movies that only appeals to men. I don't think there's a whole <laughs> lot of women that are showing up to this one. And to top it off, I think just the motion of it might get some people uh, you know everybody that i've talked to so far love the hell out of this film so it, it definitely is winning people over i will say that if you're gonna see it in the theaters just make sure you you pretty much fast beforehand because i think that's a that's a necessary for it but once it's out on video i don't think that there'll be a problem anymore i think i think it's just the big screen because i just thought about like if it wasn't that it was just my entire vision was filled up with this Maybe I'd be kind of fine. And, and, and strange enough, it's not really like the motion or like the shakiness. It's more just the cuts in it that almost like got me in the whip pans. I think it was the whip pans were always the worst. Because uh, yeah, yeah. those feel almost more unnatural than like just the moving around. Mm -hmm. No, I get you. I mean, I know uh, that that's that's how they pretty much sewed this movie together was with all the whip pans and, you know, cuts like that, which... This would have been a very interesting movie for like the guy who had to edit it. That might take some strength there. In fact, if you had to take 10 hours of this footage looking at it all day long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine what that would be like. I will say that I think this movie is kind of an example of, I'm going to say, people are saying, like, how do you connect these two? But I think it is kind of an example of something along the lines of like Mad Max or Guardians of the Galaxy, which if you have a very simple enough story, like a story that's very, you know, a to B and like, you know, just not a whole lot of subplots to it going on. I think that almost kind of gives you more time to just focus on all the little details and those little details give it so much more personality. You know what I'm saying? Cause you don't get your movie all convoluted with a bunch of other junk that sometimes isn't net. It's like, that's always the downfall of TV is cause they make all these stupid, like B and C and D stories sometimes that like are not even necessary. It's like, I didn't show up for these stories. Don't get, I don't care about the family members. I, I'm here for the main guy, you know, or the main plot. And, I, you know, I can always say it's like, do about those. That, that'd make it better. Where movies are a little bit better about that. They, you know, every once in a while you get a movie that's got kind of a couple extra scenes in it that probably don't need to be there. Somebody felt like it flushes it out or it balances it. But, no, this one, it's straightforward. Nothing to complain about. You know, I mean, it's just all good. You just got to be, you just got when you, when you to be prepared to watch it. I think that's just kind of the key thing. It, it is different. You know, it's equivalent of going to like, in like back in the late nineties when you would have had those like digital roller coaster things. It's like that, but times 10. I was thinking it reminded me a lot of like, there is the double Oh seven one that Paramount's great America back when it was still Paramount's great America. And did you ever go on that one? Was it one of those digital roller coaster things? Sort of kind of, it was of more of like, it was I mean, kind like, of like, kind of like back to the future. Sort of like that. It was more like you walk, like almost the same premise, but you more just walked in this giant movie theater and you sat in these seats that like moved and shaked around a lot. Oh, I don't think I did go on that then. So it was kind of more like Terminator 2 at um, Universal. I never went on that one, but I'm going to guess. So basically, the way it works is uh, there's a 007 one. You're all through the perspective of 007. You go to this big theater, this giant screen, uh, you have these chairs, you buckle yourself into the chair. Once the lights dim, the thing lifts off the ground by like maybe not a whole lot, but just enough off the ground. Like, Oh, okay. And then when it has the whole opening duh, where he's walking out, you see down the gun barrel when he turns and shoots the seat, literally boom, like shoots back, duh, then like swaying back and forth, back and forth. And uh -huh. then it cuts to like 
James Bond's vision in the middle of a mission. So it's just kind of like the thing, just kind of like bumping and shaking around as you're watching like first person. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, that's a little bit like the Terminator one was more like you're in seats and it shook and had all kinds of stuff, but it mixed like you were watching a movie. And I think it was all in 3D, too, if I remember correctly. And then it would also be there's actors that would run out of just Terminator and John Connor and everything. And they'd fight, you know, like maybe a T-1000 or, or not T-1000, but something they'd fight in the audience and then they'd run back and then they'd be back in the movie again and everything like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. No, I've never been that one. I've been that one. But you know, at some point, there's got to be a point when, like, you know, like the Arnold guy runs out, fucking trips at some point, like, oh, John, go without me, John, go without me. Now I know why you cry. I must self-destruct in front of all these people. He just gives thumbs up while he's like, no, 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 as he slowly lies down, just thumb up. Like, he's like, I have twisted my ankle. I must play this out. <laughs> <laughs> But, I have know, a malfunction or whatever, you know. <laughs> but no, Hardcore Henry was totally fun. I, I, I'm glad to see it. There was something I was looking real forward to because it was totally different. That, that's what I like about it. If there's something I look forward to more than anything in movies is when I know I'm going to get experience that I've never seen that before. Even when the science experience maybe isn't like the greatest movie, if I can say like, hey, never seen that before, I like that. I like just being able to see something new, and that's what this kind of felt like. But it was... It kind of was in that cool territory. Like, I like that kind of genre where it's like, we're not based off any video game, but this is very video game inspired. That's why I like movies like Sucker Punch. One of my, I really like that a lot. It's one of my favorite Zack Snyder ones. You know, I know once again, that's a movie that for some reason didn't get the praise that it should have got. I, I feel it will be like a kind of like most movies in 20 years. People might look back on that one and go, that was actually a real sweet movie. We just didn't get it at the moment. People and then, have, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, some other ones that are kind of in that category is like Gamer by the mm-hmm. by uh, Neville Dine Taylor. That's another good one, too. Not Maybe not nearly as good as these two, but it's still a real fun flick. It, it's just a cool genre of movies that, like, hey, these things, it's like, they're just inspired. Something I think about Sucker Punch is, I think that's an example of, it was, it was a couple of things. I want to say this real quick. I think a problem that a lot of people have with the movie is more of, like, the social thing about it, which is, I guess, the whole idea of just kind of, like, Hey, I know you're being forced to work in a brothel, but just pretend you're somewhere else. And I think that's the social thing that a lot of people had trouble with, which, I mean, I don't really think that was really their intention to make it come across that way. I think the whole intention was, I mean, you've seen the director's cuts. So maybe that fills a lot more of the, the gaps in and makes it make a lot more coherent, makes a lot more sense. But I think more of you just take it for what it is, which was meant to be just kind of like, a cool visual movie. I don't think every movie has to have some deep hidden meaning behind it. I think it was just trying to be a very like powerful, like just a very like cool, like visual uh, film with a lot of cool action, like things you never really seen in like very many live action movies before, you know, cause you don't see, cause the whole like, you know, world war one steampunk part, the whole like, you know, dragon part, all that kind of stuff. You don't really, you don't really see anything that level very often in, uh, the, in, in like American cinema, at least. Well, I'll say this. There's not really a movie like that movie out there. Like, the, In a sense, Sucker Punch, to me, captured the feeling of a video game. You can almost say more than a lot of video game movies do that are based uh-huh. off a of video game. And, and, yeah, and that movie, the, what I like about that movie is you can kind of interpret it any way you want. If you want to interpret it in that kind of negative way that like, oh, it's just she's just thinking about this, you know, just to kind of get away from this world. Where I think that like the way I look at it is like, no, 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 this stuff's actually happening. In, it, it's, it's one of these weird kind of fantasy-like worlds that these things happen, and then she's also in this, like, trapped in this asylum, too. Like, I kind of look at it like, almost like the evil within, where you're in this asylum, but then there's also this shit going on, and it's just weird and crazy, and you don't really know how to explain it, but you but you know it's happening. I didn't, I gotta, I gotta watch the director's cut some point. No, me wrong, I do like that movie. I'm not trying to, like, totally, like, just beat the shit out of it. I just think that it was one of those things where, the way I took it when I saw it is, was people saying, like, because whenever you saw, they never really showed the girls dancing so much. I mean, they showed them at the end. Or and there's some people out there like, you know, I think the movie would have been cooler if they just showed them dancing instead. Well, I think it was one of those things where it's like whenever you would have saw them do like some sexy striptease instead it would just cut away to them just kicking ass. And I thought that's what it was more of trying to be, which uh, that's, that, that's what I thought it was trying to say. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know. That's what I mean. I think it's up to an interpretation. I don't think it's necessary. There's mm-hmm. not like a solidified version of it which it kind of it, that works for a movie like that because it's mm-hmm. it's a fantasy film yeah but, no that that was all cool and then yeah heart, seeing hardcore henry I, I think that hopefully these movies as long as they do popular like like something like hardcore henry 
that will just help out kind of the video game movie industry in a sense. And this year is kind of a big year for it. We got a bunch of tactical video game movies coming out. You know, you got the Warcraft movie. You got the Assassin's Creed one. You got the Ratchet and Crank. Uh, Ratchet and Crank. <laughs> Ratchet and Crank. <laughs> Ratchet got and Clank. Creators of Crank. Just, yeah, just like Ratchet's like, I gotta take on this mission. Just like smoke some crank. Ratchet's just like voiced by Jason Statham. All right, mate. And Crank's it's just like, like this that. pipe that runs around with him, kind of like <laughs> almost like that wild Woody character for Sega CD. <laughs> like that pencil that was like that game. I never really played that game, but I just remember that one back in the day. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll take your word oh, on you're it. You're missing out on good, good old classic. I'm Sega missing CD. out on a game you never played yourself. <laughs> no, but I just have like seen it throughout my entire life. But so, and then you even got the Angry Birds one, even though that one's kind of like it's not yeah. like a real video game. I mean, it's kind of like a phone one. But I will say that's a, it's almost equivalent. Of, I guess you could say the Pac Man of like the last five years or so. I mean, it's popular just like that. I'm not saying anything against the game or anything like that, but it's still, I feel like that's, if that movie does good, it's still helpful towards the rest of the video game movies. I think that, uh, well, I mean, I guess we'll just find out, because you do got a lot of big video game movies coming out. Um, I think that Warcraft, I'm hoping that one's going to be really good. I'm not going to lie. I don't really, of, of all the movies, of all the video game movies coming out this year, the one I care the most about, which is weird because I never played one of the games, the one I care the most about is Ratchet and Clank just because that's actually made by the creators. And I'm uh-huh. curious to see what they do with it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, well, that's one of those ones, like, I'm going to go see that one. It'll be fun. I've never played the games because it sounds weird, but I think when those kind it's kind of like there's those games and Jack and Daxter and all that stuff. And I maybe it was just me, or I just felt like I was content with my, like, Nintendo characters. Like, I didn't need new fangled Sony characters coming out to bother me. Not saying anything against the games, but they just didn't appeal to me at that time. I was like, I got Mario. I got Sonic the Hedgehog. And at that point, I think that was also when, like, you know, you're, like, 15 years old. You're like, got fucking Grand Theft Auto. (laughs) So, like, I I was maybe just a tad bit past the age for those games. Not saying that you couldn't play them at any age, but they just didn't jump out at me as much. And it was also the point when I was probably way more of a Nintendo fanboy than I was playing PlayStation games. So you almost felt like you're like, well, I could play this, but you know, Mario Sunshine came out or Legend of Zelda or something like this. Like, I got to st- stick to my guns now. <laughs> yeah, well, plus I think that that game right there, it uh, underplayed it myself. But I kind of see what you mean because that was at a point where, I mean, now I could probably go back and play a game and enjoy it. But I think there's that point, the reason we like Mario and Sonic and those kind of characters because we grew up with them as kids. So then when you're probably already like a teenager, like here's a new like kid-friendly character, you immediately get like, fuck that shit. But I mean, chance are you played it. It was probably a good game. Well, that's um, what I mean. That, it's like that because I think that's how it was. When you look at those games that came out, it's like in a sense, our kind of kid-friendly characters, you would almost say would be Mario, Sonic, probably Crash, and Spyro. You know, the, the four big ones that came out around the time when we were young enough to really enjoy them. And then the next generations of kids' characters is now you got things like, yeah, Ratchet and Clank, Jack. Um, Jack got darker as the games went on, though. Well, I think it's the, they did the smart thing where they kind of grew with their audience. They're like, let's just say our audience yeah. started off at 8 and 10 years old. By the time Jack 3 came out, our audience is now 16 years old or whatever it was. Which Jack started, they, they started swearing. It took place in a post-apocalyptic world. They gave him a shotgun. He started smoking crank. Started doing that. It's the worst thing to do. Our, our, our audience is starting to drink and take drugs, so we might as well have Jack do that. He's not a bad influence. He's just, you know, he's just helping him with it. But so it, they they have a Ratchet and Clank like kind of remastered version. I think it either is coming out or just came out on PS4. So I think it's coming out for like to go along with the movie. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of how it is. But I, I'll just go. That sounds lazy at this point. It's like I'll just go see the movie and I'll probably just enjoy it like maybe Guardians of the Galaxy style. Yeah, Don't I have to know what I'm going in for. Just hopefully hope it you know explains it to me and I have a good time. I'm sure it's one of those things where it's probably going to end up being a good movie. It looks a little bit more like self-aware than your standard kids movie. So that's yeah, good. and hopefully it'll be kind of like in that more Lego movie kind of S and just be real fun to watch and everything like that. And they also have, uh, I'm not really, even though that, 
I'll be honest. I'm not really that excited for Assassin's Creed. I'm just kind of like, uh, cause I think, I think I'm just, I think I'm just so Assassin's Creed out. They just come out the game so frequently every other month. I feel like we got a trailer for the new one. So, I mean, that's what it feels like to me. That probably over exaggerating, but it seems like there always is a brand new Assassin's Creed coming out. So the, tr- the movie, I'm not really excited for. I mean, maybe it could be good. Michael Fassbender's playing the assassin, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. If they do it right, it should be good. Because here's the sad thing. It's Assassin's Creed is a marvelous series that they have found a way to sort of saturate it so much that they've almost kind of ruined it, sadly enough. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything against, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind going out to pick up a new Assassin's Creed game, but I got, like, I really liked them a lot in the beginning, and then once they just kept coming out, like, every single year. I mean, now it's like, Assassin's Creed hasn't even been out for 20 years, but there's over 20 games. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Especially when you're game. Is it already over twenty games? Oh, they're way over it now because they keep because okay, so now Assassin's they got all these like even like Assassin's Creed like kind of smaller ones they keep releasing on PS4 and there's like tons of those. So it's just that thing. It's like especially when a lot of your games happen to be thirty and forty plus hour long games. It's like you don't you know there's a reason why Grand Theft Auto doesn't come out every single year. You know, mm-hmm. and Assassin's Creed is pretty much just old timey Grand Theft Auto when you really break it down. Mm-hmm. So. I, I, I think it's one if they should at this point for what was that first one come out in 2009 2008 maybe 2008 2009 yeah so by that period okay that's only been eight years there's no reason they should have had more than about three maybe four assassin creeds games not fucking 25 or whatever they have like that's that probably would have kept that genre much stronger okay yeah maybe they would have made as much money but people, I think, would have they have more appreciation for it. They would treat it a little more like it's a little bit more serious of a game, because now it almost doesn't feel like it's nearly as serious as a game. I'm not saying anything against the creators or any people working on anything like that, but it kind of has the same thing. It's like it feels like it's got like Madden or something like that. Like there's just yeah. gonna be another one if you you know whatever. You could buy the one. It's fucking two years old. It's not gonna feel like it's that much different anyways, and you can get it for ten bucks. Yeah. Well, you what know? about um, what about uh? Well, I was gonna say regarding Assassin's Creed was um. I haven't uh, played one really since the first one because I got that one. I was that was the days where GameStop would really peer pressure you, and I got peer pressured into buying. I I I, I, I hate myself for it, but I got peer pressured into buying Assassin's Creed. It's like <laughs> wow, I fucking hate myself. That's never gonna happen again. Yeah, fuck you know. But um, so I got that. Stand that day, that day I got my soapbox and go. You GameStop, you can't do it to me again. I know better. I'm a changed man. <laughs> Why is that guy talking like Jimmy Stewart? I don't know. I just ignore him. Why is he away. yelling at a storefront? <laughs> he's, he's not even standing... yelling at the people inside. He's yelling just at the store like it's a it's like entity in itself. He's standing on a soapbox, literally a soapbox, even though he's tall enough to be kind of standing there. <laughs> but no, um, for some reason he has the old like the old like British boy orphan hat too. <laughs> no, but um, he's got an, he's got newspapers in his hand. It must be his job, <laughs> his day job. <laughs> What I was going to say, though, uh, about like that was one of those things where that's back when GameStop would really peer pressure you into getting shit and they peer pressure me into getting that game. And I was just like, oh, OK, well, like, you know, just like very aggressively. Now, now I almost wish I was I'm not going to lie back then. I was more of a pushover. It's like, it's a good game, man. You're, you're going to miss out. Oh, this and that. Blah, 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 blah. Like, well, I'm kind of low on money right now. I'm like, oh, you just pay. You can reserve Friends it. are going to want to hang out with you anymore. Not even mom, that. But you, your mom's well, not going to look say, at you don't call me back. It's like, what? What? Cause you can get Assassin's Creed or bring the whole family together. And, uh, and then I just, eventually I just kind of gave in like, all right, well, cause it was, did it, it was a game that looked interesting to me, but, then, but then I didn't need to reserve it. Then when I reserved it, I didn't have the money at the time. So I just reserved it. Then when I picked it up, like a week later, I went there and it was the same guy who reserved it to me. He's like, okay. It's like, you're getting it like a, a week later from when it came out. It's like, you fucking cocksucker. We had this conversation, you know? I even told him. I even, I didn't say that to him. But like, <laughs> in my mind, I was saying it to him. He was just like, "Yeah, fucking." Poor That's where I'm just like, "Yeah, we actually had this conversation like a, like about a month ago or so." I told you I didn't have the time, money at the time, and you told me it's okay. You just come pick it up. Give me my fucking game. And the guy just kind of like, oh, "Okay, just you know." <laughs> That's mostly why I like. I, and it's like I think just from all those experiences at GameStop. That's why I would li- I would rather just go to Walmart, which is probably the worst of the stores. But the only reason I don't mind buying a game sometimes at Walmart is because the guy doesn't say anything. He gets the game for me, you know, takes me over to the register, I pay for it, and I leave. And we leave with smiles on our faces. Even <laughs> though he works at Walmart and probably is going to hang himself later that night. And I had to go to Walmart and buy that, and I feel ashamed of it that I'll think about him hanging himself. 
<laughs> but you gotta the do what you gotta is, do, you know? Whatever helps but your But the wallet. thing is, I don't get hassle. And that's like, I, I, I like, I rather would do that than get the, it, I mean, I'll say this. In recent times, GameStop's not nearly as bad, but there's just no. still that hatred for it, so. They just throw the question at you, would you like to pre-order some games? No. Okay. That'll be fourteen fifty or whatever, you know. So um, that doesn't happen to you because I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> to their credit, there's that time where it's just like they didn't have any new games. They, they like, they didn't, well, they had new games, but it's like they only pre-ordered brand new games. You, you, you couldn't just go out to the store and get one. Ember, I think I told this before when Grand Theft Auto V came out. I just went up there. I'm like, yeah, uh, can I copy Grand Theft Auto V? Yeah, what was it reserved under? Well, I didn't reserve it. I'm like, well, we reserve games here. It's like, well, it's a brand new game. I assumed you guys ordered extras, right? And the, like he's like, oh well, um, you know, can't logic that. Like it's a pretty big game. I imagine a lot of people want to buy these things, right? And the guy's like, all right, well, uh, well, uh, you know, and I wasn't trying to like bully them into it or anything. He's just like, like, all right, I go well, to Walmart. <laughs> we get this. We just like, well, we get this. This this guy, he's had his copy here for a while. It's probably we got a shipment tomorrow. So okay, he just like. So he sold me someone else's copy because he's like, I don't think he's coming in today. So he's probably, you know, we'll get, we get more tomorrow. So here you go. I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you. As you're walking out, this guy comes in and all you hear is you're just walking out. And then all I hear is like, what? You sold my copy? You motherfucker. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> just like, oh, oh, geez. The guy comes about, you're like, you can't believe this. They sold my copy. What'd you fucking get? Uh, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. Yeah. Good choice. At least they got one of those. Fuckers. <laughs> like, you have a good day. Just walk in my car. I should feel but, more conflicted about this, but hey, shit. I like how, like, in our talk of Assassin's Creed, it's just like, yeah, there's an Assassin's Creed movie, but you know what pisses me off? It's GameStop, fucking dicks. <laughs> well, I think but, that's, I think, because, like, when I got the game, I was like, there's no way this game was worth as much as I paid for day one. And then, cause it's a fun game, but it was like, the same mission over and over and over. And then it had a couple of glitches here and there, and then they just keep on coming out. So even though I understand a lot of people love Assassin's Creed two and Assassin's Creed well, like, like two was like when they really had it like dialed in. I to me, I felt like that was great. And as those ones, like I bet you if you went out and bought a, like the newest, because the newest one's supposed to be really good. The cool thing is, is since I haven't played them since three, you would get to see all these improvements that they had over the, you know, from each generation of them that you would get this game, it would, it would feel like a pretty big brand new game. It'd be going from like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas all the way to Grand Theft Auto Five, maybe, you know? Mm -hmm. So it might be kind of cool. But at the same time, it's just, it, there's, I think that's what kind of is. There's just so many of them. It just, it, it gets me lost. And plus, ah. I was also kind of like, I'm playing as a, I'm playing as a douchey bartender who has to go to some virtual reality shit. What the fuck is this? Well, that, that that's dumb. I always, I mean, some people like that story, but I always, I feel like that's unnecessary. I feel like the only reason that was thrown in there in the beginning was just to explain why you have fucking GPS in like the 1400s. Oh, it, like that, that to me, like the only reason why, when it's like, it's a fucking video game. We don't need to explain why in Red Dead Redemption, do they explain why you have fucking GPS in the <laughs> old West? It's not like he pulls out his thing. and like, let me check my, you know, my old wagon phone. <laughs> like they tried, it's not, even that. He, like, it it's not even that he like pulls out a Tom Tom. Yeah, pulls out like brought to you by Tom Tom. People forgot about that shit before we had before we had like that shit in our phones. We actually had to go out and pay somewhere from like for, like forty to eighty dollars of like a little like computer saying if not this more. Way. Like, all right, yeah. And then you had the garments and all of that stuff. But um, you know, speaking of kind of old west and also going back to kind of like Batman this. You know what I went back and watched recently was those two Antonio Banderas Zorro movies. Oh, the first one's really good. Which those those ones like when I was a kid, I was so into Zorro. I watched everything. You know, I watched the old movies of Zorro. I watched the Disney like TV series of Zorro. Like anything I get my hands on, I fucking love Zorro. I even dressed up as Zorro in the third grade. I don't. I've never met anybody else of like fucking our generation that dressed up as Zorro for Halloween. You know what I mean? Like that is literally like that's that's like what your he's, grandpa would have dressed up as. You know, he's basically proto Batman. Yeah, and it really is because it's like, you know, so maybe it makes all sense, like, why I really like Batman and why I really like Zorro is because they're pretty much just, like, the same character just in a different time period. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the one that makes, like, the Mask of Zorro, the, you know, the first Antonio Banderas one, I think what makes that movie so cool, and this is almost, like, the way that when you do, like, almost a new version of an old character, it is, like, the perfect way to do it. Because, one, it still takes place back in the olden days. It's not like they modernize them at all. But what I like about that movie is it's just a sequel to, like, the Mark of Zorro and all the, the other ones. It's like, here's your original Zorro that you know and love, 
played by Anthony Hopkins. And then Antonio Banderas is the next guy that's going to be taken over as Zorro. So here's now your 90s Zorro in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I think just that style of doing it like that, it's like it's so smart. You know, it's almost like, you know, who else kind of used that was Ant-Man. Like, yeah, yeah. when when they did that, they're like, okay, here's your original Ant-Man. We got him there. But then we're going to introduce you to your secondary Ant-Man. It works. But that, that original Zorro movie, too. And I think the thing was, because when that came out, that movie did big. You know, and I think it was still, you know, in the 90s, we were still into fun. We were still into having a good time. So you got the swashbuckling going on. It worked out well because, you know, there was other movies. Yeah, I mean, swashbuckling is kind of a lost genre. I mean, you could say that Pirates of the Caribbean is like probably like one of the last things to really like be big on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this movie right here, like, it, you know, it did great. And I think that by the time that second one came out, it was a little bit too – it was almost like they took too long. They, if they would have made that sequel maybe like three years later, if it would have came out like in 2001. But also at the same time, I think that after the – because, you know, Matrix came out right after, you know, Zorro did. And from that point on, that's when we started getting our darker, serious movies. You know, straight up, Matrix is that movie. It's like one of the best movies of all time. But it also is one of the movies, too, that changed a lot of stuff for better or worse, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, well, I also think that, like, The Mask of Zorro, which – I think it's fantastic. I remember seeing that as a kid. For whatever reason, that one seems so much bigger, so much bigger and so much more grander than the uh, Mark of Zorro. Mark of Zorro seemed a lot smaller. Or not, it's not Mark of Zorro. It's the... Um... Fuck. I, just, I literally just watched Legend Mark of Zorro. Zorro. Legend of Zorro? Yeah, maybe that's what it's called. Because Mark of Zorro is like the... Zorro's like back, the, bitch. That was the yeah, Mark of Zorro is kind of like the original Zorro movie, I guess you could say, because there's like the original like 1919 like silent one. And then they did that sweet remake in 1940 mm-hmm. which is probably like the other really really good zorro film and then yeah because in a sense you can almost say if there's you can almost say there's like three main zorro movies i know there's like other ones in like in other countries in spain and all that stuff they got their own zorro stuff going on but almost if you're gonna watch three movies in a row and just like this is a complete kind of like trilogy you could watch the mark of zorro in 1940 then you could go into Mask of Zorro, and then you could go into Legend of Zorro if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Legend of Zorro is still actually a really good movie. It's it's not it's perfect. It's got some kind of weird things in it. It's still really fun. Still got it's got almost probably even more action in it. Strangely enough, but it yeah I know it does have a kind of a smaller feeling. And then it's they do the, the thing in that movie where they're like you know what people kind of like the comedy and you know there was a little bit of comedy in you know Mask of Zorro throw throw some more comedy in there. I mean there's a part where the the fucking horse is smoking a pipe. Really? It's been so long since I've seen that one. <laughs> well, that's one of those ones. Like I've seen, I've seen the Mask of Zorro a lot, but I like I just bought it on Blu-ray recently because I only had it on VHS, so I haven't seen it in widescreen since in the theater. So it felt like I was almost like going back and rewatching the movie. And then the other one, I think I saw it once in theaters, and I think that was it. Strangely enough, I, I never saw it after that till now. So I kind of forgot a lot of it. It, it kind of pieced together to me as I was watching it, but. Yeah, it's got weird parts where, like, you know, he drops a bottle of whiskey and the horse drinks that or something like that. And then another part, Catherine Zeta-Jones drops her pipe out the window and the horse is smoking it. Does, <laughs> so does just, the horse just open its mouth and just catches it or something? Or? Well, no, Zorro comes down and the horse is just, he turns around and he's just got the pipes. It's just a big, huge white pipe and it's just, he's sitting there smoking it. It's just kind of like, it's just a little bit on the slapsticky side. The horse would do some wacky shit like that in the first one, but not as much. Like, he'd be like... Where those the whole part he's just like uh, Blackie. He's just trying to find a name for the horse, and he's trying to come to him. And then he like jumps down. The horse just slightly moves out of the way. Yeah, just enough. Well, to me, to me that feels more kind of like realistic horse humor. The other one's kind of more like they try like to expand head humor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm not saying like it's not really bad, but and then they also have kind of the weird thing too because they have and the, the second one of the Tony Bandera's one. He has a kid one. to come fuck it up. He has a kid kind of mess up. And then Catherine Zia Jones is just kind of being kind of like a dick in the movie and stuff. And then they like they, they do a thing where it's like they break up, but they got to get back together to complete their family. Like, which almost seems I'll say this for like a Zorro movie. Fuck that. It always. Yeah, it seems kind of weird. It's, it's literally like if Batman got married in one of the fucking movies and stuff. And then the, the next movie, he's having marital problems, like almost one of those ones like Alfred. She just doesn't understand me. It's like, well, sir, maybe if you weren't being such an ass all the time. Well, you know, I gotta still go out and be Batman. You know, it's fucking what I do. What the fucking turns and looks at the audience like a Woody Allen would be like, you, you guys want to see me be Batman, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. See, they fucking agree. Say what you will. I kind of want to see that Batman movie now. Just <laughs> fucking Batman. bitchy, whiny Batman. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just married. Breaking to fucking, the fourth I, wall. Like, 
<laughs> Bring it, it's like a Woody Allen movie. To, in fact, we got Woody Allen fucking directing it. Why not? Like, it's just like, that's all it is. It's There's really, like, not a whole lot of Batman. There's almost not even really a story to it. It's just Batman kind of going on, like, Jason you know, Biggs. I, I, I was married at one point. <laughs> Jason Biggs is back. He's like, you know, I'm on my third wife right now. You know, I was married to Talia. I was married to Selena. You know, now I'm fucking married. To, who the fuck am I married to? Vale. Fuck it. Yeah, but no, I, I, you know, I decided to go full circle. I'm married, you know, I'm married Vicky Vale, you know. It seems like a weird one, but, you know, if you go back in the day, you know, that's it's kind of where we started. We felt like we should. But now she's broken up with me. I, I don't know what to do. You know, she says I can't go out and be Batman every night. I want to be Batman. You know, it's, 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 I do it for the people. You know, it's my thing. I, I imagine he's having this conversation like he freeze frames in the middle of like, a battle with Solomon Grundy or something like that. <laughs> and he turns and look, and he's going, yeah, this guy... This guy, look at him. Fucking dead zombie you got right. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't even... He sits down like on a chair that has to have to be there and crosses his legs. <laughs> I can't believe it. I got to deal with him, you know, all the time. Never fucking dies. Never fucking dies. You don't get it. You know, these are the things you got to go through when you're Bruce fucking Wayne. I mean, come on. You you people understand, right? You got these problems. You got a wife at home. You just She doesn't get you, you know? You got these things, you know? A man's got issues. Got needs. Okay, I guess I should probably fight this guy. Gets back up, gets in fighting position, just goes back to like this crazy, <laughs> badass, like Arkham Knight style fight with Solomon Grundy. Anyways, I would say he's like slapping his hands together, dusting him off, talking to the camera. It's following him. And he's like, he's like, so Vicky, I, I'm calling you up. You, you, you want to go on a date? You know, I was thinking that, you know, they got a new Zorro movie that came out. You know, it looks like Antonio Banderas is coming back for a third one. Yeah, well, you know what? It's important to me because that's the movie I saw when my parents fucking died. You know, and some people might say that, hey, maybe that movie's just, it's a bad place to be. But you know what? I look at it this way. I fucking like Zorro. I'm still going to go see Zorro. I mean, it's not Zorro's fault my parents died. Yeah. I forgive him, you know? You know, it's like I had hot cocoa that day they died. I still drink hot cocoa today. Fuck that. I ain't stopping yeah, me. There's nothing wrong with hot cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, after all, the negative, after all the negative press on Batman v Superman, we figured we'd try a drastically different approach. <laughs> we, we got Jew like we, Batman's technically Jewish when you think about it, so it's not that far off. <laughs> I know that that was a time period where you know Jewish people were kind of hiding themselves, maybe trying to be kind of American, maybe Italianish even. But let's just go back. Bob Kane's Jewish, Batman's fucking Jewish, Superman's fucking Jewish. So let's have this, you know, written by Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> written by Woody Allen. <laughs> starring Jason Biggs. Yeah, starring Jason Biggs. You know, he's Biggs not just Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Maybe not him. because I think he is Jewish. He's not Jewish. I heard him in a podcast. He's not? He what actually, is he then? He, he's not, I don't know, he's not Jewish, but um, he said he's like... Probably what, he's probably whatever that guy, because we went to school with a guy that literally could have been Jason Biggs stunt double, no doubts. <laughs> yeah, that guy. And he said, so he, <laughs> I'll have to ask him, ask him like, so have you been in movies? Like, no, I haven't, but I know who you're talking about, you know. But um, he actually, uh, I heard it, Jason Biggs on a podcast one time, and he said, because he was, he, was like, he was the first time, I guess, uh, the Woody Allen character was being played by Woody. So, and at some point he was talking to him, but like, Hey, so what are you doing this year for? Like, I don't know. Like he said some Jewish holiday. He says, Oh, well, um, I'm not Jewish. He says, you're not Jewish. No, no, I'm not Jewish. I'm like, I thought I was afraid I was gonna get fired for a minute. He's like, Oh no, that's fine. I just thought you were Jewish, but okay. <laughs> I was afraid I was gonna get fired. <laughs> oh. No, I don't know what it is. Like that would be, I would love to see the Woody Allen Batman picture. Like, <laughs> like. I mean, basically, I think we were doing more of like a because I haven't seen the movie he's in that I, that almost sounds more like it could be the the guy from Curb Your Enthusiasm or even Woody Allen himself right there. Oh yeah, well that's well, I'll say this, um, Larry, what's his name, Larry? Fuck, because that's the same guy that created Larry, you know him and Jerry Seinfeld Sanders? created. Which I always feel Larry's Seinfeld is literally like the Woody Allen TV show. If you really think about it, because what, what does Woody Allen make? He makes he makes movies about nothing. What is Jerry Seinfeld, or what's Seinfeld about? It's a show about nothing. It's kind of the same thing. It's just people in their daily lives and just what goes on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'd love to see the Batman version of that. Why not? The other thing, too, I think about with, like, going back to Mask of Zorro, at some point we're going to get to a period where, you know, maybe about 15 years from now, where you could literally use the Mask of Zorro as, like, that's the movie that he went to see when his parents died. Because we're always seeing Mark of Zorro. 
But at some point, you could almost technically use that one, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a weird thing, you know what I mean? Because it would be like, okay, well, Bruce Wayne, you know, technically if he was like our age, once, Bruce, once we became Bruce Wayne's age in like the movies, and they wanted to do Batman, like his origin story, like if we happened to be Bruce Wayne, that would be the movie we would have saw at 10 years old. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, the, the new one... They had they had a they had a poster like I'm not sure what it was, they had a poster for the Mark of Zorro yet on the uh a bit on the movie theater the big screen it said Excalibur so, so well I feel like it's like yeah maybe they went to go see that because they're using yeah I think is it the Excalibur with uh what's his name in it um it's got Sean Connery and Sean Connery and Liam Neeson's and no it's not Liam, Liam Neeson, Neeson plays it's a bitch. A, yeah he's in it he oh yeah yeah that's right he's, he's in it and, but it's got um the guy from Pretty Woman. Richard Gere? Or, or is that First Night that I'm thinking of? Am I getting that confused with First Night? I think, I think you're thinking of First Night. Okay. Excalibur? I'm talking like the 70s Excalibur. I thought it was an 80s movie. Maybe maybe it was 1980 or something. There's, there's yeah, there's the, there's that, that, you're thinking of First Night. That's the one you're thinking yeah, of. I'm thinking of First Night. Um, with Richard Gere and like Sean Connery. This one had like, I don't remember all the actors in it, but I want to say maybe... Like a young Patrick, it was like trying to go like it was trying to do the epic mythology thing with all like the fantasy elements. It's got Patrick too. Stewart in it too, right? I think he might be in it. I don't really remember. Exactly. I know I've it seen that movie, it... but I don't think I've seen that movie in a long, long time. It's really weird because there's that part where basically his his uh, sister, who he's never met, wants to fuck him, and he gets all hypnotized and basically he, he stops and he looks at the screens like, "Can you believe this?" My own flesh and blood wants to fuck with me. Wants to fuck me. And she's just like fucking plowing him. She's looking at the screen, arms up, like, "What can I do? I'm under her. I'm under her control. I can't do nothing." It's the 14 fucking shit? hundreds. You don't question these things. You know what? Fuck. I could be dead tomorrow. Do you know how many diseases are going around now? Everybody's eating fucking bread. Nobody's getting the right nutrients. You know, I, I could die. I might as well take what I can get. Woody Allen directs everything. <laughs> I, I would love no, the Woody so- Allen universe of fucking. <laughs> superheroes and mad, you know, like mythical like movies and so on basically yeah but then, then they then she then she pops out an evil kid and uh you know evil blonde haired child and she's like i want to kill my own father ha 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 you know and then all this and that and then king arthur loses all his shit and pops out kids all so, fucking disfigured and everything You're like you sure you killed me no i had sex no, with your sister like, He's he's actually not all disfigured, but it is all one of those things where they try and play it off like he we had to be born of sin or whatever, <laughs> and like, and then basically at some point like, I actually want to I want to say maybe it was, who's that really? Um, she's a really like Helen Mirren. I want to say played the sister. Wow. I think it was Helen Mirren. Maybe I'm wrong. Back when she was really young and hot. Um, she still looks good for her age though. Yeah, because I, but, I like but anything she, that's fucking like nights the round. And, like, basically at some point, like, Merlin comes in, like, tries to fuck shit up. And while she's sleeping, he casts a spell on her to turn her really old. The son walks in. says, ah, my mom, my mom's all fucking old and creepy now. He strangles his own mother. And then, you know. You know, speaking of Zoro, though, I, I want to know when they'll finally come back and kind of bring that character full around. I mean, I know that, like, because I, I think. They were talking about a new reboot, of course. Well, they, they did that. They had, like, a couple ideas because. There was a reboot that they're going to do where it was like modern day Zorro or it's even like futuristic Zorro. Futuristic, futuristic Zorro. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, here's the thing. There's already characters that have, fucking Zorro. that have been inspired by Zorro that are futuristic. We don't need Zorro to be – like that, that to me, that feels like an idea like, you know, I mean not saying that it can't be cool and it can't be kind of like a Batman Beyond or something like that, which that's almost like even what Mask of Zorro is. It's like Batman Beyond Zorro. Zorro Beyond. But it's like, you know, what Zorro is cool at is that it's swashbuckling. He's got a sword. He's got a whip, you know. But it, you know, he's a superhero back in the 1800s. Like, why not? I, I saw a thing. I was, I was I just kind of goes like, I'm not just gonna go down the rabbit hole of looking at Zorro things. And it's like, I didn't realize that originally, which makes kind of sense. It's like that Robert Rodriguez was supposed to be attached to the Mask of Zorro. Steven Spielberg wanted him to do it, and then some that makes sense. And that's how Antonio Banderas got put in the role. And originally, they were actually gonna have Sean Connery was gonna play. Um, the old Zorro, which is kind of like, seems like a fucking weird choice. That's, I mean, I'll say, I mean, I love Sean Connery and all, but I think even though Anthony Hopkins is an old British dude, I think he can get hey. away with coming off as a Spaniard. I, I, yeah, he, I, as I say, like, is Anthony Hopkins, but yeah, Sean Connery just feels almost like too... too no like, way around that. Yeah, that, that, I mean, like, don't be wrong, it'd probably still be <laughs> interesting and everything like that, but 
No, it's like, but Robert Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez nowadays would still do, I think would make a sweet fucking Zorro movie if they want to kind of bring it back. But I think that's the thing. It's like, keep it what it is. It's like, you know, that's it's supposed to be swashbuckling. You know, it's fucking L.A. back in, you know, the 1820s, the 40s or so. If it's the, if it's the, um, the Antonio Banderas one, it takes place in like the 40s, the 50s or so. But that's like the whole point about it. It's supposed to be the Antonio Banderas one, 40s, 50s. That one took place in like I think 1850s. What the second one takes place in? I think oh 1850. 18... I think like 1940. Okay. Oh no no no. no. Well, yeah, let me rephrase this. When people say 40s and 50s, it's got to be, you know, you got to yeah. I know what you meant like 1850s, 1840s, right? And I think that 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 would kind of like something's cool when you kind of keep things like in their time period because you could almost say that like probably those Zorro reboots it sounds like a weird thing but i feel like they almost came because of like batman came out in like 89 because you know the weird they did the weird thing where like instead of making more i guess you could say superhero movies they went and said like well let's pick the superheroes that kind of or the regular heroes or whatever you want to call them that inspire these other ones and kind of came slightly beforehand and that's where you got things like they did the phantom that was another movie i went back and watched recently because i'm like i haven't seen that in a long time too and what made that movie kind of cool is, like, they could have modernized that, too, but, like, I think by keeping it in, like, that late 30s Indiana Jones time period, that almost makes it a little bit more fun. Like, I, I like that when you keep a movie period piece. Plus, it makes a movie, no matter how old the movie gets, it never feels totally outdated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't time? really seen... I haven't seen that movie in so... Well, actually, I've only seen, like, the first 20 minutes of it, so I never even saw the whole thing, but it's been some time. That one's it totally worth going back out and watching again. I, I had a grand old time, because I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. You know, because you had, I think there was like four of those movies that kind of came out. It was like, they're all period pieces, all kind of like almost Indiana Jones inspired, but they came pretty much because of Batman came out. And you had mm-hmm. the Rocketeer, the Phantom, the Shadow, and then there was um, Dick Tracy. And it was kind of like mm-hmm. these four movies, all period pieces, all back at the time. And then I felt like after those were kind of done, they kind of said, well, you know what can, re- you know, what really inspired Batman was Zorro. Let's do another Zorro movie. And that did sort of well, but I think that sort of adventurous film kind of died in about the 2000s. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. saying we didn't have a couple of them here and there, but it seemed like that genre was kind of out the door for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll come out with a new one. Hopefully it won't be that futuristic thing, but I'm sure a new one will come out. Hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, because I feel like that's the way, like, you know, if you can't sell a, a Western, how can you not sell, like, a movie that's not only is it a Western, but you get sword fighting in it, you get action adventure, it's technically a superhero film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, it's kind of everything in one. Yeah. But all kinds of fun stuff there, but probably could wrap up the episode here. Fucking been a nice length. You got all sorts of fun stuff coming up. We're going to do in the next couple episodes, we got Justice League versus Teen Titans is coming up, and then we're also going to do go back and do a retrospect on one of our favorite movies by Clint Eastwood. We're Eagles there. I think it's 1968. Total classic, action-packed, to-the-max film. If you want, check it out. Go out, watch it beforehand, and then you can hear us talk all about it. Or you can hear us talk all about it, and then maybe that will change your mind, and you'll go out and buy it. But it's one of those movies, I think, it, to you know nowadays generation, total hidden gem film, so I can't wait to rewatch it and talk all about it. And then plus we got Justice League and Teen Titans. It's like we're getting all these great gifts at once. Batman mm-hmm. to the extreme for like the last four weeks. Yep. But till then, make sure to check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, and more. You can help support us on Patreon and just look for Old Man Orange anywhere on the web, and we're probably there. So I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. See you some other time. Later, folks. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast.